Hi everyone, I'm Anna Black and for the last session of today, I have the user experience and model-driven apps for you. And just like in the old Western movie, I will take you through the Wild West with the good, the bad and the ugly. So let's go. Um, a few words about me. I work for a Microsoft partner as the lead D365 consultant, and I love anything and everything Power Platform and user experience related. So I'm writing about them on my Power Platform cookbook blog. Uh, if you want to visit it, scan the QR code that I'm sharing with you. And I also invite you to connect with me, especially on LinkedIn, as recently I post quite a lot of content there. Um, and if you want a copy of my slides, you will find them on my GitHub after this call. Um, so as a quick intro, intro for the benefit of those who do not work directly with Power Apps or are not familiar with the user experience, I want to explain the key concept. So many people actually think that UX and UR are, are the same, um, but that's that isn't correct. In simple terms, the UX is about the user's journey to solve a problem, while the UI is what the user sees when they are solving the problem, so the app's visuals. When it comes to the Power Apps, we have two types, the Canvas Apps, which offer full control over the layout and design and allow to highly customize the user experience. The model-driven apps, however, focus more on data and provide a standard user interface with limited customization. But but even with that limited UI customization, we still can do a few things to optimize the UX in the model-driven apps, and I would like to share my approach on that with you. Um, so let's start with what the good looks like for the forms. So well-designed forms can enhance user experience and satisfaction. You can achieve that by doing a few things. So place the frank frequently access data on the first tab and rest of the fields on the subsequent tabs. Use the multi-section tabs instead of multi-column section as the form's reflow behavior works better. Thanks to that, the section will reflow beneath, beneath, each, other, beneath um, each other instead of fields being resized. Um, also, so implement consistent tab structures. Uh, so I recommend using three columns tab for complex form and two columns for simple ones. Using the sections helps to create a visual hierarchy, uh, which will assist users to digest extensive data more easily. Also, um, always aim for consistency in the name fields across all the tables and forms. Either use the sentence styles or capitalize each word. Um, the good practice is also to add descriptions to your fields as they work as tooltips for the users. And use business rules to hide and show fields or to create conditions for making any fields required. Um, and personally, I never use the out-of-the-box forms but create copies of them that protects the users from any unwanted updates, especially for any Dynamics um, native apps. Um, I also like to add a reference panel to my forms to bring multiple subgrids all together uh, that are easily accessible via icons placed next to each other. That creates a smooth navigation experience. Um, and you can see an example of a reference panel on my slide. Um, so the, on the other hand, it's a bad practice to overload forms with data-driven controls like subgrids, timeline, or lookups. Uh, they affect the form loading speeds, with, which negatively impacts the UX. So limit, limit the use of them, or at least avoid placing them on the first tab. Also, um, inconsistent layouts and overcomplicated business process flows look bad for the UX. Uh, so my other tip is about the timeline. By default, the timeline shows 10 activity record, but you can adjust that via the classic interface to better use up the space and limit the excessive scrolling. And moving to the uh, and moving on to the ugly. Um, so poorly designed forms with 
unnecessary required fields and unused legacy data can really frustrate the users and hinder productivity. So, for example, consider hiding the related tab as it can be confusing for some of the users. I find that the out of the box capitalized section names are quite ugly. They are harder to read and draw too much attention from the users. Um, however, you can use the easy translator tool to quickly update them. And always try to leverage quick create forms for the initial record creation instead of forms with multiple required fields. Um, what about the navigation? It's a good practice to organize your sitemap into logical areas, like for example, a main area and settings. You can also implement easier navigation for the user by enabling collapsible groups. Always create a quick access to the frequently used tables and dashboards, and also add URLs to help users to easily open a related system, like for example, FinOps. Um, what is bad then? Mm, uh, as shown on the example here, using a single area with only with ungroup and lengthy navigation looks quite bad. Uh, it can cause excessive scrolling and frustrate the users. Also, it is quite ugly for me to make the user navigate via um, other tables or use advanced find to find the key records as they are not included in the main navigation for quick access. Moving on to the icons. Um, so the icons play a vital role um, in the visual appeal of the app UI. Create a good user experience by updating the custom table icons. Not everyone knows, but you can add uh, you can also use the color icons in the model-driven apps. However, be mindful of your selection as mixing different styles of icons, such as color and monochrome, or empty and filled icons can create an inconsistent and disjointed appearance. Um, and although I do love puzzles, I find the default puzzle icons as quite ugly. Because if you leave them in, user cannot benefit from the collapsible navigation as they won't be able to differentiate the tables by their unique icons. Um, let's cover the views. Um, so well-crafted views will empower users to efficiently navigate and access crucial data. My tip is to always use short and self-explanatory view names. Also, using consistent column ordering across all the views will help the user with familiarity and harmony. Um, adding charts will also enhance enhance the filtering capabilities. Um, and when you create uh, an also, you can create dashboards with the frequent, frequently used views for easy access. And on the contrary, it's a bad experience when users do not have views to support them to find information or when the views contain too many columns causing excessive scrolling. Also, um, there is no need to include uh, columns for exact. Also, the also, there is no need to include certain columns. So, for example, removes the status column when the view is called active uh, accounts. Um, and on the slide, you can see an example of a very long list with out of the box views for the opportunity table. So, always review them with the user and aim to limit the long list. Um, next on my list are the PCFs, and I really like to use them to enhance UX as they can help to improve data visualization and also user engagement. In fact, there is a phenomenon uh, in the UX where users perceive aesthetically pleasing designs are more usable. However, do not overuse the PCFs. Too many can slow down your app, which will create a bad experience. Also, um, be mindful of the selection. It looks, um, it looks ugly when you mix PCFs with a different look and field as it creates inconsistency. Um, and on the slide, you can see a few examples of the Microsoft PCS, which come with full support. So make sure that um, if so, make sure that any other PCF that you choose are also supported, and they won't cause any user issues leading to bad or even ugly experience.
So for the good command bars, always create clutter-free experience and hide options that are not needed. Um, when adding custom buttons, which will, for example, trigger automation, do not leave users without any progress message. Um, that can confuse them and leave them unsure of the system responsiveness. Uh, it is also ugly to hide the key options under the ellipses while the unused buttons take up the main space. Security roles can be your best friends, uh, so use them as a strategic tool to refine UX. Um, multiple versions of the same form can confuse users, so use the security roles to only show the forms, views or dashboard that are built for specific user group. Um, and again, I tend to not rely too much on the native apps or out of the box roles. They might allow access to unnecessary features and take the user focus elsewhere. So always aim to properly define and update those roles. Um, and adding Canvas app can also really enrich the experience. Uh, so use Canvas apps for improved search or record creation capabilities. But remember about harmony in the visual integration. So similarly to the PCFs, avoid inconsistent UI design as that can lead to, dis to a disjointed experience. And embedding, and embedding Canvas app, they are not, um, that not every user has access uh, to can result in confusing error messages and frustrating experiences. So carefully manage permissions um, to provide a seamless user experience. Um, last on my uh, on my list is the use of AI. So absolutely stay ahead of the trends and leverage the AI powered features such as generated summaries, process guidance, or intelligent suggestions to provide valuable support to the users. But remember to be subtle about any UX enhancements with AI. It can be a bit of a gamble to use an excessive number of AI tools and it can be confusing and overwhelming for the users and lead to very poor UX. So my last advice is to complement, not complicate your model-driven apps with too many AI-driven features. Um, so if you join my tips and you are looking for more UX and UI related content, I have an, an exciting announcement for you. Um, so I teamed up with the incredible Kat Schneider and the great Charlie Sexton and we launched a new user group, Power Platform UX UI Allies. We already lined up some amazing speakers and we invite you to present as well. And since we have number 11 in our name, we will be hosting all our events on the 11th day of each month. That will help you to remember it more easily. Uh, can you see that? It's all about the user experience with the three of us. Um, we are hosting our first meeting next month, so on the 11th of July. Um, you can scan the QR code for more info and to sign up for the session. Um, we really uh, look forward to your participation and thank you so much for attending my session.